Hey everybody. Okay, so I don't know what all you're seeing and what all you're not really. Just kind of set up this angle. So at the behest of my very wise brother, he suggested maybe I should pay attention to the wearing harness. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, that. So before I got too far along, uh, and had to go back too many steps, I uh, just threw the wiring harness on. And um, you know, all I talk about how how much smaller this bike is um, would seem to indicate that I have way too much wiring. But the case is, it looks like it's just about right. Um, yeah, as far as how everything is placed, it's actually kind of close-ish uh, to how it was on the TDM850 because uh, the TDM850, uh, interestingly, because it had its dry sump uh, oil tank kind of back where the battery would kind of normally mount-ish, um, it mounted the battery kind of far forward uh, behind the carburetors. And uh, the fuel tank actually came up over the top of it. So the wiring is actually almost a little short, you know, reaching back to the battery back here. Um, so it's, I might have to lengthen wires or whatever, but it shouldn't be a problem. Um, one of the things, one of the reasons why I also wanted to lay out the wiring harness is because the cooling uh, circuit, you know, the radiator circuit is also uh, needing to be kind of put together, and I haven't done that yet. Um, now, because the TDM850 had a radiator cap on its old radiator, um, and I'm using an FZR400 one, which is essentially roughly the same exact size, but uh, the FZR uses a remote uh, filler cap. And uh, so I was, and, and it kind of mounts it up here next to the headstock. Um, I would love to do that, but uh, this is the TDM850 uh, thermostat. And uh, it's, you know, it's an amazing condition. And I'm, I'm wanting to use that. Uh, so it's going to require me to kind of like probably place it um, very low in the chassis, like maybe like here-ish, uh, below the, the regulator rectifier, and have the filler kind of maybe kind of going over here-ish, maybe. So, because, yeah, there's a lot of hoses that, that kind of need to all converge weirdly in the same area. Um, there's a hole that I had to drill in the, uh, in the, uh, the reinforcing plate, the whatever you call it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's basically just a great big aluminum web that ties together the, the headstock uh, and the frame. And so there is a... Uh, a exit from the engine that comes up through here and then there needs to be there's a hole in the frame that feeds the radiator so I have two hoses kind of coming out almost parallel with each other uh, one on top of the air one on the bottom and uh, yeah I'm just trying to fit everything together in a way that makes sense uh, the, the reason why I put the regulator rectifier up here is because these kind of get kind of hot. And uh, on the TDM 850, it was actually mounted outside the frame, uh, you know, kind of in the open air area, so it would get a lot of cooling air. And in this instance, I didn't want it, you know, mounted really low, close to the engine. I wanted it in, a, in an area where it was going to get sort of uh, some air sucked in around it. And because the carbs, uh, are here and it's going to be kind of pushing kind of a, a gap around the fuel tank uh, 
I figure that it's going to be sort of air that's going to get, get kind of cool air sort of drawn in underneath the, the fuel tank as well as air kind of being drawn in right here. There is going to be, of course, some warm air coming in from the radiator uh, and above the tank, but hopefully it shouldn't be a bad area for this uh, regular rectifier. If it is and it dies, I will, you know, figure out a different mounting solution. I will mount it, uh, you know, further someplace else. Uh, FZRs typically had them mounted out in the tail section area somewhere. Um, so we'll just see how that goes. Anyway, and so yeah, I mounted some, uh, instead of the YZF 600 bars, which one of them was just really bent and kind of poorly repaired, I uh, mounted these FZR 600 bars, which are slightly longer, and that's okay with me. That's fine with me. And uh, the the weights on the end of it uh, should give it a nice uh, engine vibration counter vibration, or it should absorb just some of the vibrations that this engine is going to impart to everything. And uh, the, the extra length is, uh, I think it's going to be a benefit as far as just having leverage to uh, turn the thing. Uh, not that it's going to be like a very hard turning motorcycle anyway, but it just is going to give a little more control. And then uh, I was just kind of showing you also in kind of a close up, uh, just kind of where the oil filler is going to be uh, inside the frame here, which is kind of why I wanted to have a tank that tilts open uh, to access this as far as doing oil changes and checking oil levels and things like that. Uh, so yeah, so all the, the, the oil thing is going to be there, the coolant fill area is going to be over here. Um, on this side of the uh, carburetors I am mounting a, uh, the fuel pump and it's driven by uh, some vacuum uh, from the carburetors. And uh, this mounts it, you know, clear of anything up out of the way and fairly close run as far as, uh, you know, the vacuum hoses and fuel hoses will go. So, yeah, uh, it's kind of coming together. But, yeah, just this whole area around here seems like it's going to get very crowded very easily. And I can't overcrowd it too much because I do need it somewhat accessible for... For checking the oil, which I'm going to be checking probably religiously for the first number of months riding the bike. <laughs> probably every ride I go on, I'll be like, is there, is there still in there? Is the bike used? Is the engine burning oil? Um, yeah, so anyway, I hope uh, you'll enjoy this short episode. Thanks. Bye. All right, so in the pursuit of the, what is that modicum, uh, K-I-S-S, the acronym, Keep It Simple Stupid. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I made this little fancy dancy uh, plate adapter out of FZR 400 uh, coil mount uh, and welded the uh, mounting plate for the regular rectifier on that. It's steel, it's nice, it fits perfectly, but maybe it's not necessary. So, after deleting that, um, I'm thinking that, oh, well, hey, since this is just such a big aluminum uh, plate and aluminum being a great uh, heat sink, uh, maybe I should just mount the regular rectifier directly to that and also maybe goo on some thermal paste uh, so that the transfer of heat to the aluminum frame is more efficient. And so that will possibly do a couple of wonderful things because it might open up um, a nice mounting area for the 
uh, radiator uh, cap. Uh, there was a couple of like uh, uh, threaded rivets, inserts, whatever they're called. And so I can make up like a little mounting plate so that could be rigidly mounted and secure that so that doesn't vibrate around. Uh, that should keep clearance good for that and uh, provide a fairly direct route for the hose going out through the frame to the radiator and also clear up space for the other hose coming from the engine uh, into the thermostat. Um, and give this guy kind of some place to exist. Uh, yeah, that's always, that's freaking, it's always like a, uh, how do I fit everything in here? But it's, I think it's going to get a little bit closer to going that direction. Anyway, just thought I would add that to this video since that's what we're talking about. All right, bye.
All right, well, since, <clears throat> excuse me, since I started uh, working on all these things, uh, the Lancia, as well as these motorcycles, I've come to appreciate how a lot of engineers uh, want a component to uh, perform more than one purpose. So, yeah, I decided that I would like this uh, regulator rectifier mount to, and the tank support. Kind of stay up here out of everything's way so that I have like this whole area down here for messing around with thermostats and coolant hoses and all that stuff. So that should be up there and tank and that sits completely shrouding that and there's still a lot of open air area around here for cooling to happen so and I didn't have to screw with the wiring harness uh, cutting it, you know, moving something further elsewhere. Uh, so I think that's definitely a win. Anytime you can leave the factory wiring harness intact, I think that's a good thing. And this is supported and braced and welded in. And I think that will be a good solution here. And apparently I'm getting lots of text messages. Anyway. So, in, I didn't exactly keep it simple, but I think I uh, did, a, uh, did justice to this little bit of components. That's it. <laughs>